everybody. Greg here with Mike. And this is It Was a Thing on TV Presents Before the Show 3. And we're doing this today because, Mike, something came out today. My favorite baseball card set of the year. It's called Allen and Ginter just because I love it because there's more than your sports stars in here. There's actors, there's nowadays influencers, the whole gamut. I, I just showed Greg the uh, one card that I pulled earlier, which was of Timmy Trumpet. If you remember what he did last year when Edwin Diaz came into games for the Mets, he has a card. And this is a hobby box. And there are three hits, as we call them in the industry. Uh, some combination of autograph cards, relic cards, rip cards, printing plates, and book cards. Uh, the good stuff are the rip cards. Printing plates are one of one. And uh, book cards are generally like dual autograph uh, swatches, generally numbered out of 10. This is usually a fun rip. Uh, I did not like the first box I got, but such is life. So I actually have it open. I'm trying to, there we go. Uh, and then the top of the box has a box loader card. And if this is a rip card, it actually has three cards inside. Except it doesn't feel like it's a rip card. What it is... Oversized Vlad Guerrero Jr. card. Oh, that is terrific. So I think that's about five by seven in size. So if I want to get a special holder uh, for it, I need to go to the card shop. All right. I'm going to get the box out of the way. Put the packs uh, in three piles. And I will show the worthwhile stuff. I'm not going to go through all the cards because we could be here for an hour. Uh, in each pack, there is one subset card, and there's some different subsets. I shared some with uh, Greg and Chico earlier, and uh, there's also a mini card. Uh, let's see, Rafael Devers, uh, Freddie Freeman, Miguel Cabrera, Riley Green, some Ortiz for Luis Ortiz for the Pirates, Gary Sheffield. Oh, okay. what, te what team of uh, Gary Sheffield? Brewers. Oh, so that's a, a an old card. That's uh, basically a rookie picture of him. Uh, the the insert card is twenty five point one consecutive hitless innings by Cy Young in nineteen oh four, and the mini. This I think is one of the rarer mini subsets. Uh, only in, and they have it for each of the major league baseball cities. And this one is for the Yankees. Uh, it looks like it's just like Memorial Park. It's got the retired numbers. I don't know if Greg can see that. There you go. Oh, that looks yeah, a little bit better. That. Yeah. Yeah. It's an, I think this is like one per box. I, I think uh, I, I got one in the uh, the previous box I opened. Is it like the, uh, do they have like a different card for each of the retired numbers? No, it... no, no. They, they have one card for each uh, MLB team. Okay, so, so it's just so it's just the one section of numbers they got in the photograph. Right. So uh like I saw on the checklist that the Guardians one is the Guardian statue, which is like across the street from the uh offices for uh the Guardians. Uh let's see here. Fujinami of the A's, Garrett Cole, Kyle Gordon, the comedian, Ezekiel Tovar. Oh, there we go, another Timmy Trumpet. And then Ken Griffey Jr. in a Reds jersey. And then the big card, uh, the, the, the big subset is the Gear Falcon, G-Y-R Falcon. And that's something that they put in every, uh, uh, one of the subsets that's in every pack. The, the birds come from what I've seen, like about four a box. And I should say there's 24 packs in the box. And then Prince Fielder's the mini which is kind of ironic because Prince Fielder is anything but mini. All right, let's put those there and go to pack three. 
All right, let's see. Andre Dawson, Cade Cavalli, rookie for the uh, for the Nationals, a pitcher. Adam Lefko, looks like he's a Philadelphia announcer. Gavin Lux, Kenley Jansen, Jim Tomei in a uh, Phillies uniform, even though he only spent three years there. The mini, I can't tell who this mini is. Nathan Dogface Apodaca. I think he's like a barber for the baseball players. And then uh, the insert uh, card is Ken Griffey Jr., eight consecutive games with a home run. And I think those are, again, like one in four, one in six packs, maybe even closer to like one in three. All right. Nolan Arenado, Jose Ramirez. Okay, that goes to the side because it's a guardian. Jose Ramirez. Tristan Casas, Corey Lee of the Astros, Mookie Betts, Oswald Peraza of the Yankees, the piano in the Music to My Ears subseries, musical instruments. They I, they have some of the weirdest stuff, but it's so cool. And then the mini, Bun B. Bun B? He's a rapper. I have no idea. Maybe he knows Young Dolph Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe they're doing a collab. I don't know. Yeah, Dolph Sweet and Bun B. Uh, Schwarber, Old Time Hockey, who's a YouTuber apparently. Ski, DJ Ski. DJ Ski. It, it says DJ Ski. Uh, Corbin Carroll, Rafael Nadal, oh. uh, uh, Jackie Robinson. Oh, that's nice. Uh, another one of the, uh, uh, it's called, I can't read what it says. Spotless Spans. Spotless. Uh, Ted Williams reached base in 84 consecutive games in 1949. Oh. And then this is Independence Hall. Oh. The World of Wonder, Independence Hall. So again, like I said, it's kind of educational, kind of, kind of goofy. Uh, it didn't get much goofier than last year's uh, cards, where they gave you a bunch of food, and if you got them all, it gave you like some kick-ass barbecue recipe. Ooh. Okay, I have my first thing in this uh, pack. All right. Okay, good. So I'm gonna save that for last. Uh, Mark McGuire is the mini. A A's or Cardinals? A's. Okay. Uh, another subset. Fun in the sun. Kiteboarding. Kiteboarding. So if, you ever, if, if you ever wanted a kiteboarding card, there you go. Uh, Wander Franco, who we're not going to talk about. Uh, Miguel Vargas, Jordan Alvarez, uh, Steven Strasberg, and then who is this? Will Myers. Oi, oi, oi. Will Myers bat card. Oh. I totally forgot he was with the Reds. I don't think he's even with the Reds anymore. I forgot he still existed, Will Myers. Yeah, he was with the Padres for a while, but uh, I, I knew he moved on to the Reds. I thought he got moved on from there. Uh, okay, another spotless span. So these are like one in every two packs. Hunter Green, Grayson Rodriguez, Kyle Schultz, professional wiffle ball player. Luis Castillo, Dansby Swanson, Pete Alonzo, and uh, another Pete Alonzo. This is the spotless streaks. 11 extra base hits in his first 10 games of his career. And then the mini is Carolyn O'Connor, president of base of business operations for the Marlins. Oh. Like I said, said they, they have some weird stuff in here. Or, or, or not weird, but interesting stuff. Well, when you said Carolyn... What was the name? Carolyn O'Connor? You're thinking Carol O'Connor? Yeah, you knew I was going there. Uh, let's see, Bryce Harper, uh, Josh Hader, almost called him Bill Hader. That would be yeah. really impressive if Bill Hader had a card in Alan and Ginter. He may eventually, you never know. Max Freed, uh, Gio Urshela, uh, Charlie Blackman, Lil Baby, another musician, Lil Baby. Maybe a little baby hung with young Dolph Sweet. I don't know. And the Hen Harrier is the 
the bird card I got. The mini is Adam Lefko. I think we talked about him, the, the sports uh, anchor, sports journalist. Okay, so that's one third of the packs down, so two thirds to go. Let me just say, as far as sports reporters and anchors go, nothing's going to top Scott Hansen in last year's Allen and Ginter. And you know I've got the autograph of him. I, I pulled that. Uh, actually, I think it was like the first box I bought last year. And I have it right over here somewhere. I have it in my personal collection on the okay. side over here. Yeah, by the way, right, right there. There it is. Oh. By the way, free preview of NFL Red Zone this week, so... All right, let's see. Say uh, Suzuki, Corey Seager, Jonathan Valena, a tattoo artist, Tim Anderson, Will Clark, Albert Pujols, Zach Granke, Granke Miniature, and Jimmy Rollins, 38-game hitting streak, uh, another one of those spotless uh, spams. Yeah. I remember that. I remember Rollins having that hidden streak. Wasn't it like, I think it was over two years, I think. I think you're right. I remember that, too. All right. Let's see here. Uh, July, uh, the miniature here is Jonathan Valena. Another tattoo artist card. Must be tattoo artist of the scar, uh, stars. Uh, the bird card. Secretary Bird. Not, not Secretary yet. Secretary Bird. Well, Mike, you do know Mike Francesa met Secretariat. Yes, he did. But did he meet Secretary Bird? I don't think so. Uh, Cody Bellinger, Giancarlo Stanton, Hayden Wesneski for the Cubs. Uh, who is this? Meek Mill. Oh, Meek Mill. Meek Mill's in here. Shane Bieber and Dylan Cease. All right. Wow, this is a great big Philadelphia set between that reporter guy and Meek Mill. All right. Uh, another spotless uh, – what is this? Spotless spans. I can't read this this cursive. George Springer, five home runs during the World Series. All right. World of Wonder, uh, Venice. So there's a Venice card. Ooh, Venice. Okay, uh, who is this? Jake McCarthy, Adley Rushman, Zach Greinke, Andres Jimenez, uh, Fred Curley, World 100-meter champion, and Bo Jackson. Still two good cards out here. Uh, and after this pack, it looks like it's still two good cards. Jeter Downs. Sarah Natchicheni. Oh, that's the voice of Ash on Pokemon. Chico would be going nuts over that. Why do you know who he is? Or who she that is. She I is. apologize. She is. Yes. Sir. My bad. Uh, David Ortiz, uh, Edwin Diaz, Spencer Strider. Barry, I know. Barry Zito. The musical instrument card, the clavis. The little musical stick, you know easy instrument to play when you're in high school or in, in music class and then lou brock miniature card oh yeah they, they span like all generations all right shohei is the spotless spans this time superstar performance it doesn't even say what he did One night after hit, bashing two home runs and driving an eight against the Royals, he fanned 13 batters in eight shutout innings. No other player had done that uh, in his career. Hold on. You know what would be great if they put in one of those spotless cards? When Wade Boggs drank 64 beers on a cross-country flight. It's true. Oswald Perez, Austin Riley, Ricky Henderson, Dawn Staley... Nick Prado, Mark Teixeira, and uh, another interesting person in this set uh, for the miniature, Ian Rappaport. So there's your rap sheet card. Oh, that's a great portrait of rap. But it doesn't top Scott Hansen. All right, hold on. This is my second uh, hit. 
So we'll save it at the, and this might be an autograph based on what I see. Okay, what do I have here? This is, what the heck is this? Ermsey. Looks like, it, I, I think I pulled the card of his earlier and I saw what it was. He's some sort of artist. I, I don't know exactly what he does, but it's not a picture of him. Uh, Snowy Owl Bird card. Uh, Will Benson, former Guardian. Uh, Yoshida for the Red Sox. Herrera. Who's Herrera? Ivan Herrera for the Cardinals. Who's this? Daniel Van Kirk. Uh, Co-host of podcasts Dumb People Town and Pen Pals. I don't know. Oh, uh, uh, sometimes uh, does characters on Bob's Burgers. Okay. And what autograph? Ah, uh, Fujinami from the A's. Shintaro Fujinami. Okay. M miniature card and uh, yeah, they, they put autographs on these little cards. And I don't think it's numbered. It looks like it should be numbered because it looks like it's a different color, but yeah. Hopefully he's uh, doing better because uh, when I saw his stats earlier this year, he wasn't doing that well. Also, probably doesn't help he plays for Oakland. All right. Uh, ten packs left. Derek Jeter is the spotless uh, uh, spans. 44-game hitting streak on the road, 2006 to 2007. The miniature is Chipper Jones. I'm oh, sorry, Larry Jones. <laughs> uh, Hoodie Allen. Hoodie Allen? Hoodie, H-O-O-D-I-E, Allen. He's some sort of musician. Maybe he knows Young Dolph Sweet, too. Uh, R&B hip-hop artist. Okay. George Kirby, O'Neal Cruz, Mark Mulder, Shea Langoliers, and Dontrell Willis. Okay. Ooh, Dontrell and Mark Mulder. Definitely a flashback to 20 years ago. If that was Tim Hudson, we would have had a two or three people who have never been in my kitchen. Hey, hey Greg, I'm not kidding. The pack I just opened, what? guess who the first card is? Tim Hudson? Tim Hudson, yes! Yes! <laughs> two or three people who have never been in my kitchen. You couldn't script that. That was hilarious. And I assure you, that was not planned. No, okay. that, that, that was brilliant. First card on the top of the next pack I open, right after you mention, boy, if uh, Tim Hudson comes out, that's going to be like the uh, the trifecta there. All right. Who is this? This is Olivia Pachardo. Oh, I know who she, She's the first NCAA Division I female athlete in baseball. That's and what it know, says. Yeah. You know how I know that? Did she because play she, in Long Island? Yes, she did. She played in our league out here this past summer for Sag Arbor. Okay. So maybe she'll be out there next year. Shams Charania, who's an NBA beat reporter. I've seen tweets from him. Uh, Trey Mancini, Tyler Freeman, another Guardian. So that goes into the Guardians pile. Uh, who's this? Tom Schwartz, again, TV personality. Uh, fun in the sun bodyboarding, and the mini is Ezekiel Duran. Okay, hey, two thirds he, of the way done. All right, hey, Ezekiel Duran, no Ezekiel Elliott, who got run the F over in his last play as a cowboy. And, and who does Ezekiel Duran play for? He plays for the Rangers, so oh. how appropriate. Uh, JP Real Mudo. Benny Wasserman, the Silver Slugger. What? I guess, let's see here. Worked as an aerospace engineer and technician before finding his true calling at age 58, impersonating Albert Einstein. I, I'm not making this up. There is a card of an Albert Einstein impersonator in this series. Oh, that's fantastic. Roberto Clemente, uh, Yadi Molina, Justin Turner, Vlad Guerrero Jr., uh, the uh, spotless uh, 
Spans is Bob Gibson. We all know what he did in the 68 World Series. And then the mini, this one I don't think I've seen. So this must be a rare one. The unassisted triple play, rarest of the diamond. With only 15 uh, occurrences through 2022, the unassisted triple play is even rarer than a perfect game. It's pretty cool. All right, seven packs left, and there's still one more goodie. Maybe a rip card. That'd be fun. Uh, Yandy Diaz, former Cleveland player. Lou Brock, Greg Maddox, Seth Brown, Brian Reynolds, Bo Bichette, foil card. It's got foil around the frame. Uh, Mike Trout mini. And Fun in the Sun Spikeball. Oh, Spikeball. Some of my students play that. Uh, dur they played it during lunch today. Okay. Is it I like a new, that's a new thing? I don't know if it's necessarily a new thing, but it involves that little net there with like, uh, oh. it's, it's sort of like a, a trampoline, but with holes. And they, you know, spike the ball into the, uh, whatever you want to call it, surface. Yeah, I don't know if uh, what the rules are or if my students are making their own rules, but seriously, students brought that down to lunch today and we're playing that during lunch and uh, they're having fun with it. It looks more exciting than pickleball. I got to be honest. Pickleball just looks like kind of glorified tennis. It is. Uh, <laughs> Nick Castellanos. Oh, where's Tom Brenneman when we need him? Uh, I was hoping you'd say that. Uh, Jordan Walker, Shohei, Stephen. Qu Why does Stephen Kwan have a rookie card insignia on this one? Last year was his rookie card. Okay. Ted Williams, Larry Walker, a black border of Cade Cavalli. I think the black borders are about two a box. And then spotless spans, Bryce Harper, 2022 postseason performance. All right, one card I haven't seen yet. I have not seen the Wimbignano regular card. I got the mini earlier, but not the regular. Mark McGuire, Chipper Jones, Glaber Torres, Alex Bregman, Chris Bryant, Gorilla Nims, a rapper. Maybe Gorilla Nims knows young Dolph Sweet. Cal Ripken Jr. mini. And a buzzard card. So I got the bird again. All right. Four packs left. Let me see if any of these feel really thick or heavy. No, they're all the same weight it feels, so. Can't single one out to save to last. Uh, the spotless uh, spans card is Willie Stargell, 1979 World Series MVP. The mini is Bucky Dent. Oh, that's good. Uh, regular cards, Bomani Jones, yeah. Patrick Wisdom, Stan Musial, Kenny Lofton in a Rangers uniform. Wow, what a deep cut. Yeah, Kenny uh, Lofton in a Rangers uniform. Don't see that all that often. And uh, this is a bat card. This actually is probably not a bad bat card given who it is. Uh, it's Corbin Carroll, who's probably going to be your rookie of the year this year in the National League. Oh, yeah. So that's not bad. All right, so there probably is nothing in these last three packs. Clayton Kershaw, Josh Bell. Again, another, well, ex-Guardian. Robert De Niro. You talking to me? Alex Rodriguez, Reed Detmers. Kevin Hart, oh. the ukulele, oh, the ukulele, and the mini is a dessert card. Oh, a dessert card. creme brulee. Oh, that's a good pack. You got De Niro and you got creme brulee and Kevin Hart and creme brulee. Could you imagine if Robert De Niro and Kevin Hart were in my kitchen and they were eating creme brulee and they're making creme brulee? Yes. Oh, that make that would be even better. Trey Turner, Francisco Lindor, Mariano Rivera, Shane McClanahan. Another Bun B card. Yay. 
Uh, Alex Verdugo tanning the fun in the sun activity tanning, which I think was actually in the first pack that I, I opened earlier. And then Corbin Carroll mini card. So on a little Corbin Carroll run as we go to the last pack. And I see, I wonder if the Wembenyan is a short print if I haven't seen it yet. Uh, George Mateo, Starling Marte. No, I'm sorry, Ketel Marte, not Starling Marte. Anthony Volpe, George Springer, Christian Walker, Scott Rowland, Nick Castellanos, miniature card. And last but not least, uh, the spotless spans of Don Mattingly, 10 home runs in eight consecutive games back in 1987. Oh, yeah. That was a big moment when uh, he had the eight game streak with the home runs back in 87. So I I think I did okay with the Corbin Carrolls, especially because he's going to be a star, it looks like. He, he's doing really well for the uh, for the Diamondbacks. Um, but interestingly enough, I don't know if, if some of these cards are short, shorter printed than others. Uh, the card I mentioned to you privately beforehand that was actually mentioned on the news was the Guardians beat reporter Andre Knott has a card in this set. Oh. Uh, including swatch cards, including autographs. And actually in the first box of this I opened, I did get one. So that's why I'm wondering if there might be some short prints because I'm seeing a lot of a lot of the same names among baseball players, but that De Niro card I got was the first De Niro and the Kevin Hart card I got was the first Kevin Hart. So I wonder if there are possibly some shorter prints among the, uh, the main cards. I know at least in years past, they've done shorter runs on the miniature cards where you can only get them in rip uh, uh, cards uh, but I don't know. I didn't see any uh, what looked like short prints uh, of those. Plus, also, I don't think the short prints are of celebrities. I think the short prints are only of baseball players. No. Oh. It would be really great and funny if you pulled a mini of Kevin Hart. You know why? <laughs> because, <laughs> Kevin, because Kevin Hart is short. That's the joke. So yeah, that's uh, Alan and Ginter. Like I said, I love it every year. I don't know if I'm going to buy another box. Uh, I've bought uh, enough boxes, but um, this was probably by far the best box. You know what? I bet you that uh, that A's card that I got uh, between the the Carol and the uh, the Fujinori or whatever his name was, Fujinami. I bet you those are probably going to be the high value cards because. Japanese people love buying Japanese player cards. So I bet you that would actually go for a pretty penny. I'm going on eBay right now to take a look. Okay. I don't know if any have sold. I doubt any have sold, but weirder things have happened. Uh, I don't see. Yeah, this just came out today, so I don't think anything... Uh, has has sold or anything like that. Let me just take a quick look. Ah, uh, nope. One has uh fifty five dollars best offer accepted. Oh, jeez. Uh, actually, hold on. I see another one. One hundred forty nine ninety five best offer accepted. Uh, I can take a look to see what those are really fast because one website that I really like for that'll tell you the the accepted offer is 130point.com, 130point.com. It will tell you the accepted offers. Fujinami, Alan, Ginter. All right. Sold items, most recent. Okay. Okay. The first one that had the $55, the offer accepted was $40. And then, ah, jackpot. Well, at least jackpot based on this. The one forty nine ninety five sold for one hundred fifteen, so that pays for the box. So that's good. This uh, Fujinami paid for the box potentially, and then I have the the Corbin Carroll, which I'm sure is going to 
pay off quite handsomely too because uh he's uh just one of the big big uh players nowadays let me just see real fast if uh, any of the uh any of those have sold the back cards uh 24.99 24.99 uh, fifteen dollars. Okay, I mean, I figured it was going to be probably about a yeah. thirty dollar card, so maybe a skosh less than that. All right, but apparently, uh, maybe I got lucky with the Fujinami because uh, I've heard of them, but I obviously I'm not a an A's fan, and I don't see A's games that much, so I don't know what type of numbers he's putting up. There's one way I can check. I can easily go to uh, uh, to ESPN and find out. Um, let's see here. Oakland. 46 wins, 107 losses. Good heavens, that's bad. Okay, Fujinami. Looks like he's injured. He's not on the current roster. Oh. Uh, well, don't worry. We can do this. Fujinami. We can pull up his baseball reference page. Okay. 6-6. Six, six. Dang. Oh, he's a pitcher. I was looking at outfielders. No wonder he wasn't showing up on the roster. I thought he was a fielder. <laughs> uh, well, he's not on the active roster as a pitcher either, so we're screwed both ways. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Seven and eight with a 731 ERA and two saves. 82 strikeouts and 76 and a third innings pitched. His whip. Oh my gosh. This is like unbearable looking at his whip. 1.51. Good pitchers have a whip of one. He has a whip of 1.51. Oh my gosh. Oh, no wonder he's not with Oakland anymore. He's with Boston or Baltimore. Ha ha ha. Oh my gosh, I'm just a hot mess. Well, this is embarrassing. And on that note, we're going to be right back. We're going to take a quick commercial break and be back with more before the show. After these messages, we'll be right back. I'm a Disney Sunday movie. So what happened today? Anything? When you run a home for orphans, don't go over there. anything can happen. <laughs> John Denver, Cindy Williams, The Leftovers, Sunday. You, you were always my favorite. And now you've never, never been better. Because now, sugar-free certs has NutraSweet. And it's never been better. Sugar-free certs, now with NutraSweet. Well, you're the kind of man that likes to do things your own way. And you can bet it's right when you get through. There's a beer that always fits back in your hand Cause you're a bad, bad, bad man And this butt's with you All you do This butt's for you Now, Kodak is proud to present the world's most thrilling blues Right in here on our sharpest 400 speed film ever. Introducing Kodakolor VRG 400 film. Ghostbusters. Tonight's ABC Thursday night movie will continue in a moment. Tomorrow, come on down. Three guys give motherhood a try. Ta da! Hello, Cinderella. It's the premiere of Full House. Then, the wedding kept her from being deported, but the romance will have to wait. Sing to you? Spanish lullaby. La Cucaracha. <laughs> the premiere of I Married Dora. Then... Brothers and sisters! Edison uncovers a television evangelist. Max Headroom following the premieres of Full House and I Married Dora tomorrow. It's an all-new Gambler with an all-star cast. Kenny Rogers, Gambler 3 next Sunday. Tell your friends and neighbors! 
CBS Sports Break, sponsored by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated. Good evening. It was a great day in the NFL for players who had been languishing in the shadows. In Washington, Doug Williams came off the bench and passed for two touchdowns, including this bomb to Gary Clark to lead the Redskins over the Lions. For the Rams, Charles White, the running back who replaced the traded Eric Dickerson, rushed for 213 yards as L.A. came from behind to beat the St. Louis Cardinals. And in New England, Herschel Walker, who replaced Tony Dorsett as a starter in the Dallas backfield, broke loose for this 60-yard touchdown run in overtime that carried the Cowboys to a dramatic victory. More after this. You're going to go out and have a couple of beers? Now, that's what I call living. But too much. That's never a good idea. Go ahead. Enjoy a beer or two. But always remember, know when to say when. A message from Anheuser-Busch. The Saints beat the 49ers to tighten the race in the NFC West. For CBS Sports Break, I'm Brad Musburger. This is CBS. I don't even get the reference, and I think it's funny. Dico, do you want to read what it says on my screen? Bevo, home for the holidays, a special long... Oh, now I get it. Because, Chico, the audience doesn't know this, but I'm going to say it here. And by the way, we're recording before the show three, by the way. Mike just... Oh, I, ripped... I know. He just ripped everything from Alan and Ginter, and it was all glorious. But I recently got Sling Orange the Sling app package just to try it out for the month. And what's included in it is the Longhorn Network. And I was curious to watch it because I live in New York and obviously no one here in New York cares about the Texas Longhorns. No one in New York gives a crap about Texas. If I learned anything from Lewis Black, if Texas were to drop from the face of the earth, New Yorkers would be like, eh. Okay. I watched Longhorn Network programming. They do not have enough material for 24 hours a day. They have, I swear to God, on Longhorn Network, they had a University of Texas student fashion show on there. As God is my witness, that's what they had on there. I recorded it, and I'm like, this is like public access level. What is this doing on a network owned by ESPN? You are a product of the Walt Disney Company. Okay, now, Greg, uh, now that you've reminded me, I think I took Longhorn Network off my cable box. So now I just need to re-edit and see what I'm missing. I don't even remember if it was ever on mine. I would have checked earlier, but I was watching Strange New Worlds. But let me let me just do a little check here. Well, while you're doing that, I want to give you the press release for Bevo Home for the Holidays. This is from last Christmas. We're hoping it's going to rerun this Christmas. On Sunday, December 25th, Longhorn Network returns its Christmas programming tradition of providing a Bevo backdrop for family gatherings with an accompaniment of Texas holiday tunes. This year's Bevo Home for the Holidays program showcases brand new footage of Bevo 15, now in the seventh year of his reign as University of Texas's honored mascot. Bevo Home for the Holidays will be televised without commercial interruption throughout Christmas morning beginning at 7 a.m. and ending at 1 p.m. on LHN. Using GoPros and cinematic cameras, LHN captures unique pasture scenes of Bevo 15 at home as he is fed, groomed by silver spur handlers, grazes and plays with two spot on the ranch. This is the best part, Chico. Joining Bevo 15 will be lifetime Longhorn and former Texas game day analyst, Jordan Shipley, who sings his original song, My Baby Wants Bevo for Christmas. What LH the what? Oh, I'm, hold on a second. LHN commissioned Jordan and his singer-songwriter wife, Sonny, in 2016 to create the perfect musical salute for Bevo 15 during the holiday season. So right now, we're hoping this is going to rerun. And even Greg, I told him earlier, I said, Greg, remind me sometime in December to see if this thing is going to air on Christmas Day. Because if so, I'll record it. 
we'll find a way to do some sort of live watch, even though four hours is a heck of a live watch. And we're going to make this a new it was a thing on TV Christmas tradition if they air this for the last year of the Longhorn Network, because you might or might not know this, but next year ESPN is shutting down the Longhorn Network when Texas moves to the SEC next year. Probably because ESPN has the SEC network, and it would kind of be weird to have one of the teams in the SEC have its own network. Yeah, just a smidge redundant. I was just looking for a Longhorn network on my system, and it's not there. Wait a second. Hold on. I'm just doing some more searching here. All right. Taking a look on Google, it looks like this Bevo Home for the Holidays goes back to at least 2018. Not even joking. I'm taking a look here. Yeah, it's, it's talking about December 25th of 2018. Bevo home for the holidays. The Basically, it's a copy and paste of the same press release. Even down to the point of saying uh, Jordan Shipley and his My Baby Wants Bevo for Christmas song is going to be played. Dale Hansen is gone. We need a new Texas homegrown holiday tradition. Not uh, gone like dead gone but no, gone is retired. retired yeah okay i like this about longhorn network espn has a 20-year agreement to own and operate a year-round 24-hour network dedicated to texas athletics in partnership with ut and img college boy that 20-year agreement not going to last what more than about uh i think 12 years at this point because i think you said it uh started in 2011 yeah okay hold on i need to see if there's more about this Oh my gosh, there's a thread on Reddit about Longhorn Network's Bevo Home for the Holidays. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. What better way to spend the day than watching Bevo roam around? Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and from the Texas Mods, hook em. Okay, I gotta see if there's anything about this. Uh, Bevo steaks sound better, to be honest. Oh my gosh. And cook Bevo with it. <laughs> this alone was worth the cable bill. Can't wait till we get the Jayhawk network so we can watch less miles grazing on Christmas Day. Oh my gosh. It's just the gift that keeps on giving. Here's a live look at Bevo. <laughs> I'm sorry. Somebody put a link on uh, this uh, Reddit thread. Is anybody recording this for me? And somebody said, here's a live look in on Bevo. And it linked to a picture of New York strip steaks. <laughs> and, and it says, I'm kidding. This is Wagyu beef, which is in a different class. Oh, my gosh. Bevo blink twice if you're being held hostage. Bevo blinks once, then keeps eyes closed in a drug-induced stupor. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. I got a great idea for Bevo. Home for the holidays. Bevo in a staring contest with Teddy Jr. Oh, my gosh. I like it. All right. I, I, I think I've seen enough of that. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Well, we saw the video earlier of My Baby Wants Bevo for Christmas. Bevo is home for the holidays on Longhorn Network. This is back in 2014. No, they've been airing this. This is like the WPIX Yule Hog of the Longhorn Network. But I will add this. It was four hours long last year. In 2014, it was five hours long. Oh, they shorted their fans an hour. And actually, for 2020, it says it was six hours long. What did they do for the extra hours, though? Well, it was 2020. Everyone was home that year, so. They thought the people need more Bevo. Oh, my gosh. So this might be the 10th year in a row they're doing Bevo Home for the Holidays. I should also note, since I have Sling on my uh, Fire TV now, I also get in my package the Pac-12 network. And let me just say, there is, like, nothing on it. Nothing on it at all. And I'm like, no wonder the conference is going to hell. 
Is this like the uh, meme with Will Smith standing in an empty room? Pretty much, except instead of Will Smith, it's Washington State and Oregon State. I mean, they got football replays. They got, like, soccer and volleyball, which, okay, I can watch maybe, like, a volleyball game here and there as background noise, but it's like... They have, like, virtually, like, no original programming on Pac-12 Network other than, like, an After Dark show they do. And even then, they, like, rerun it, like, six, seven times a day. It's something like Big Ten Network where they have, like, original programming throughout the day. Or SEC Network with Paul Feinbaum. I can't even remember if Tim Brando was on the ACC Network or not. That's how much I watch the ACC Network. I really only watch it when there's a game going on. But tomorrow, as we're recording this, guys, it's the battle for the real Pac-12 championship. Washington State against Oregon State, baby. Of course. Of course. Are you pumped? Are you pumped for Washington State against Oregon State? Yep. I wonder what they're going to give the winner. Mike, what do you think they're going to give the winner of the Oregon State-Washington State game? You think it's going to be like the final episode of a season of Survivor? Jeff Probst is going to be there to congratulate the winner. They get automatic entry into the Big Ten. <laughs> Miles will go where everybody else is going. Although, here's an idea that I've heard floated around. So, one idea that's gotten serious consideration is they would merge Oregon State and Washington State into the Mountain West, and they do, like, a two-tiered system for each sport where, like, one conference would be, like, the Pac-12 or Pac-10 or Pac-8, whatever it's called, and then the other would be the Mountain West, and the Pac would be the top tier, Mountain West would be the bottom tier, and they do, like, a relegation European soccer-style system. But that would make too much sense. Well, I would just say that would be weird to do. Like, I don't know. It would be like, if you're the Mountain West, it's like, wouldn't that, like, devalue your conference and make you feel secondary to the Pac-12? I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm putting this Wimbanyana card I got in the first box of Allen and Ginter in a sleeve and then in a hard case because oh, it looks yeah. like it's selling for $30, $40 on eBay. Oh, well, I didn't get any Wimbanyanas in my break outside of this mini, and this mini is certainly much harder to get than the regular card. The regular card looks like it's selling for $15, $20, and this is about double, so got to put protection uh, around it. Good life tip, not just for sports cards. Put protection around it, guys. <laughs> Protect your neck. Wu-Tang. Oh. Look what I just found on here. <laughs> Guys, you're not going to believe this. I found this on YouTube. Read the title of this. If it doesn't involve Bevo, I don't care. Oh, no. Bevo charges. Oh, okay. no. I think I remember this. Oh, and they're picking it up, putting Rock. it down, and there he is. Aga. He does not know where to go. Oh, he's I right. know about this. That he's is right. adorable. They do not have a scooper. <laughs> One of my friends is a Georgia fan. Like people's handlers. Ladies and gentlemen, this is like a man walking on the moon. <laughs> Never before. Oh! 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 oh my lord! Oh! Bevo! <laughs> oh! Can live television get better than that? No! Maybe that was not the best idea, but we don't care. Can we get a replay on that? Can we get a replay? Oh. That's targeting. Is that targeting? I've seen a lot of things. It was worth it. That's but that it, it was worth it. Is was that was <laughs> awesome. That was targeting. Poor Ugga. Ugga's like so short. And Bevo's like, what, 500 pounds? Bevo is steak dinner for a week, basically. He may be steak dinner for a week, but there's no way a bulldog is beating Bevo. No. I mean, 
Georgia might be the two-time reigning national champions, but their mascot against Bevo, no. You don't want to mess with Bevo. And by the way, Texas against Baylor tomorrow, as we're recording this, Texas is a 17-point favorite over Baylor. Well, of course, because Baylor doesn't have Robert Griffin III anymore. And, and has it for 12 years. And Georgia is playing University of Alabama, Birmingham. And Georgia is a 40 and a half point favorite. Damn. I know Birmingham's pathetic, but really? Oh, speaking of Georgia, I, I think we need to reflect quietly on uh, the Nick Chubb injury. I didn't really mean it literally, but the hit Nick Chubb took, oh my gosh. I don't know if he's ever going to play again. It was that bad. I don't and think it was a full Theisman, but it was pretty gruesome. It, it, it was it was up there in the, the grand scheme of things. And actually, last week, the one card I bought last week, because I love it year after year, even though it's a little on the expensive side, is Plates and Patches. And the first card out of the first pack of Plates and Patches that I opened last week, of course, Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb case hit, and from what I've read, this might be limited to as few as 17 copies. So guess what's staying in my collection forever? And I'm not getting rid of this. Actually, I was thinking about actually getting this signed by him one day. It's a beautiful card because he is nuclear. But also, uh, just uh, again, talking about uh, plates and patches, I did very well with plates and patches the last uh, week and a half between the Chubb and, oh, I don't have it here because I put it in my safe, two Anthony Richardson autographs. Oh, that's great. Including one with his jersey number on it, numbered five out of 50. Yeah, those are staying in the safe for now. Actually, if I can get my butt up tomorrow morning early enough, there's a card show that starts at 9 a.m., but they end at two, but uh, I may just opt to sleep because sleep would be really good after the last couple of days. And also I should add, and we put this on, uh, not necessarily we, I put this on social media. Uh, well, I put the picture of me with this person, but Mark Summers. I saw that. And he had comments about this. For the audio listeners, it's a copy of the liner notes of the Joker's Wild Jr. on CDI signed by Mark Summers. First was, where did you get this from? And I told him I've had it for like 25, 30 years. And then second, he talked about the production itself and said that Alex Trebek got pissed about it. Because supposedly taping was supposed to take two days, two off days on, I'm guessing, stage 10 uh, on Sony's lots or wherever they recorded Jeopardy in 1993-94. And the recording actually took two weeks, and supposedly Trebek was fuming. But that was a fun trip last weekend. Going to Canada for the first time since before 9-11, going to Mark Summers' one-man stage show, meeting the man, getting uh, some stuff autographed, and even getting hit with some errant slime. And actually, he even did a magic trick of sorts. At the beginning of the show, maybe 10 minutes in, five minutes in, I'm sitting in the front row. I, I paid for the good seats. Uh, and he looks at me and says, you, take a guess what card I'm holding. And he's just got a playing card, and he's holding it up to his forehead. And I say, it's the Joker. And he is totally, like, dumbfounded. What do you mean the Joker? Yeah, I don't have the Jokers in here. I'm like, okay, two of clubs. And ta-da, on the screen it shows the two of clubs. Yay, amazing. <laughs> it was really funny. And yeah, I even said to him, you know, there's always one in every crowd and it had to be me. The crowd ha handled it in, in uh, an appropriate manner. And so did Mark. Mark is a great guy. Oh my gosh. If anybody is anywhere near Buffalo, unfortunately, uh, the show ends next weekend, but... I took the three-hour trip, and it was amazing. First of all, to answer your early question, Jeopardy! at that time was taping at what is now Sunset Las Palmas, but what was then called Hollywood Center Studios. 
It didn't move to Sony until 1994. And second, you know I actually met Mark Summers, right? But you did the Double Dare thing five years yeah. ago. Yeah, I did uh, with uh, this girl I was dating, Jenna. She was the one who said to Mark, this guy is a product of your life's work. I'm not going to say what I was going to say. So how's your relationship with her? Oh, I'm sorry. I said the stuff out loud. We're still good friends, Mike. Come okay, on. But, but you're not romantically involved is the point. Sadly, no. Well, on that disappointing note, let's find out what's coming up this week on It Was a Thing on TV. Oh, that's right. We're doing our special Shuckapalooza style celebration for one individual that we admire so much. And haven't talked about up to this point. Which is kind of a surprise. Which is very much a surprise. And the thing is, we're going to talk about two shows this person was in. And realistically, there's at least a third that we could talk about. That might be next week. I'm just taking a look at the schedule. I thought possibly it was back to back to back. But I think in this case, yes, it is back to back to back. I'm sorry. So you're going to get three episodes in a row about this person. Well, not about this person, but rather shows this person starred in. And it's a quality name. Big name from the early 80s. With a little bad luck. Let's say that. Perfectly good actor. Perfectly good shows, to be honest. Uh, I've got some reviews uh, about these two shows. And all of them say... These shows are going to be big hits, at least for the first two shows. The third one, maybe not so much, but that's because of where it aired. But yeah, we got some good stuff coming down the line to end the month of September. And you'll find out more about that good stuff coming up later this week at It Was a Thing on TV. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you with that stuff coming up later this week. Wow! My baby wants Bevo for Christmas She wants nothing less, nothing more My baby wants Bevo for Christmas All wrapped in a bow that's burnt orange Dear Santa, I might need some help here She's got this idea in her head Tried making subtle suggestions that she picked something else instead. But my baby wants Bevo for Christmas. She wants nothing less, nothing more. My baby wants Bevo for Christmas. All wrapped in a bow that's burnt on. Don't get me wrong, I love Bevo I just don't think she's thought this thing through Maybe I could pull strings with folks I know Get her Bevo for a day or two Cause my baby wants Bevo for Christmas She wants nothing less, nothing more my baby wants Bebo for Christmas All wrapped in a bow that's burnt on All wrapped in a bow that's burnt on What I like the most about that, he didn't have to come up with a rhyme for burnt orange, and yet he did. You actually found a positive in this. Okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Former Cincinnati Bengals legend Jordan Shipley, everyone. Bang.